Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Let us first have a moment of silence for the victims in this case. Elliot Roger was born on the 24th of July 1991 in London, England to a British filmmaker named Peter Roger and his mother Lee Chen Roger. In 1996, when Elliot was five years old, the family picked up and moved to Los Angeles, California. Although remembered as a shy kid, Elliot seemed to adapt well in the first couple of years in the States, even making a few friends at school, but at the young age of seven, his mother and father would divorce, giving Elliot his first taste of adversity. He and his younger sister Georgia would split time between their parents. As Elliot grew older, he would become a target to bullies at school and became more and more shy and introverted. He would start to have a hard time making friends. By the time he turned 18, Elliot would become more and more isolated. He really only had a few online friends and he would tell his parents that he wasn't capable of making friends in real life. He would also tell them that girls were just not interested in him. Elliot would try to take matters into his own hands reinvent himself into what he perceived women wanted. He started to dress in designer clothes, got himself a nice car, you know, the whole nine yards. He thought that just by changing his outside appearance, people would gravitate towards him. People that knew Elliot noticed that he never actually changed anything else. And so it seemed nothing that Elliot wanted to change by this transformation changed. Elliot continued to be alone. One person that knew him said that Elliot was the loneliest person that he had ever met. As the years went by, his anger at the world continued to grow, upset about the fact that he just didn't fit in and was never accepted in other social groups, when in reality, it seemed that he may not have given much effort and, in some cases, even pushed people away. But he just expected these things to happen with this new appearance of his. Elliot, at the age of 18, still had never had a girlfriend, never even had his first kiss, and apparently had never even held a girl's hand. His perception of the world, and of society in general, would continue to decay. He would write about his observations of couples he would see out in public, and how it would either cause him great sadness or, or even rage to see people together. In June of 2011, at the age of 19, Elliot would move to Isla Vista, California. It's a coastal community just outside of Santa Barbara, California, and he would attend Santa Barbara City College. His problems would only follow him. His first roommates would move out after less than a month, and the ones that moved in afterwards, well, that didn't go any better. By 2012, Elliot would drop out of every class he was enrolled in, because he just could not stand to see other people interacting, particularly couples. It was too much for him to bear. By the time spring break rolled around, Elliot was closing in on rock bottom, spending almost all of his time in his room alone and his anger continuing to fester. When he did go outside, he usually recorded himself, ranting about how unfair his life had been and how he just doesn't understand why women have no interest in him. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm up in the hills in Montecito right now. It's truly a beautiful day. But, as I've always said, a beautiful environment is the darkest hell if you have to experience it all alone. And sadly, I've been alone for a very long time. I've been attending college in Santa Barbara for about two and a half years now. And in those two and a half years, I've experienced nothing but loneliness and misery. And my problem is girls. In September of 2012, while waiting for an order for a new laptop at Best Buy, Elliot found himself at a nearby firing range. It was there, after firing off just a few rounds, he decided what he must do. And by December of 2012, Elliot would purchase his first pistol. And by spring of 2013, another. He would ultimately purchase a total of three firearms. A tipping point would be July 20th, 2013. Elliot would attend a party. He made attempts to interact with women, by his own words, was ignored. He started an argument at the party and actually tried to push a couple of girls over a second floor balcony. He was not successful and he found himself being pushed over the railing by a couple of men that were attending the party as well. He would be beaten up and also suffer a broken leg. This is when Elliot would really start to plan his revenge on society. He would continue to get more and more angry when he saw beautiful women with any man that was not himself. 
And on May 23rd, 2014, his plan would go into action, the so-called Day of Retribution. He would start by killing his two roommates, George Chen and Chang Yan Hung, also known as James, as well as a friend that was visiting, Wee Han Wang, also known as David. The three men would receive over 100 stab wounds between them, and police believed that they were all killed separately as they entered the residence at different times. Just after 9 p.m., he would upload his final video to YouTube entitled, Elliot Rogers Retribution. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me. All those girls that I've desired so much, they would have all rejected me and looked down upon me as an inferior man while they throw themselves at these obnoxious brutes. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. I've never even kissed a girl. It's an injustice, a crime, because I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. And he would also send his 137-page manifesto outlining his intentions and his plan to his parents, other family members, his therapist, as well as former school teachers and childhood friends. He would then set off to the Alpha Phi sorority house close to the University of California at Santa Barbara with the intention of deleting everyone in the building. He knocked on the front door of the sorority, but went unanswered. I can only imagine that this enraged him even more. As he was leaving, he came across three Delta 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 sorority sisters that were nearby. He would open fire, killing Catherine Cooper, Veronica Weiss, and injuring Bianca Decock. From there, he got into his BMW and drove by the Isla Vista Deli Mart. He fired rounds through the windows, killing a student named Christopher Michaels Martinez. Rogers would continue to fire out of his car at random pedestrians, even hitting some with his car. He ended up wounding six people with gunshots and also six people with his vehicle. Elliot would then get in a brief gunfight with police only to escape unharmed. But in the end, he would shoot it out with the police again. And this time, he would take a bullet to the hip. After fleeing again, he hit another pedestrian on a bicycle, seriously wounding him, crashing his car. And with no way out, no way to get away, Elliot Rogers would turn the weapon on himself. The following day, police would arrive at Elliot's apartment during their investigation and find the bodies of his roommates and their friend. Such a terrible end to such a sad story. And I just wanna say, if you or anyone that you know going through depression, reach out. There is help, and there are certainly people out there that love and care about you. So it is a beautiful world, and nobody has the right to take that away from anyone. Take care of each other. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, the best thing you can do is like and subscribe. We will see you next time.